I gotta tell you, used to be Elvis, the Beatles, and the Rolling Stones. Now it's Megadeth, Motley Crue, Twisted Sister. Hey, Mom, is it only rock and roll? Or are kids on a downgrade spiral of drugs, sex, and possibly death? Heavy metal music on the Morton Downey Jr. show. <laughs> Good evening, you metalheads at home, all right? Joining us at home base, Howard Bloom, Group Music in Action. Jennifer Norwood, Parents Music Resource Center. No one, no one at the uh, Loud Mouse, yes, but we're, we're going to get there, all right? Uh, Jennifer, I'd like to read the paragraph of uh, PMRC from uh, your card beginning... Uh, Nonprofit. Where is that? Let's see that right here. PMRC is a nonprofit organization founded in 1985 to address the issues of lyrics and popular music, which glorify graphic sex and violence and glamorize the use of drugs and alcohol. That's your organization statement, right? Right. All right, let me start uh, then with you. Does heavy metal music really glamorize graphic sex and uh, drugs and... Uh, uh, what else do you have? Uh, sex, uh, violence? violence? I think some of it does. Some of it? How much of it? Uh, that's hard to say. I, I don't think I would go so far as to venture an opinion on that because it changes. I mean, groups evolve and one album may reflect some violence and the next album may not. But I think that there's enough of it there that parents need to be aware of it. And I'd like to point out that I don't feel that our group is telling heavy metal groups that they can't sing about certain topics. I think groups sh should and can sing can about anything. Can they sing about anything they, they want, or the penis, the vagina, anything they want to sing right, about? Right, and they do, and they do. Hmm? Wait a second, let's I mean, see what's that, going on. That is the topic, that is the topic of, of some songs that are available, not just heavy metal, but in other types of music, rap, um, some of the soul So you have nothing rock. against that? No, but all that we're saying is if you want to put those type of references in an album, I think you need to be sensitive to parents who may feel they're inappropriate for younger children. Put the type of consumer information on an album that will let people make their own choice without getting in the way of the freedom of expression of an artist. Aren't you really taking the chance of doing that, of, uh, let's say, labeling these, uh, labeling these albums and uh, some freako act, uh, you know, that uh, has absolutely no talent whatsoever, gets on their album... Uh, uh, triple X rated because of lyrics, etc., and everyone goes to buy the triple X rated album when it's well, probably worthless. Well, we avoided that whole rating question, and that's one of the reasons why. What we settled on, and this is a voluntary agreement with the recording industry, is that when albums contain references to graphic violence, sex, or drugs and alcohol, they will put either a generic warning label, which reads simply explicit lyrics, parental advisory, or they'll print the lyrics on the outside of the jacket with no warning. The you also, you're also you asking, of course, them. the television industry, or the soaps, etc., to do the same thing on no, their shows, those Santa Barbara and some of those there sleazebag shows. There are other groups that, that lobby in that place. Yeah. There are other groups that are dealing with those topics, and I think that they have as much influence as what we're talking about in music. The reason we chose to focus on music is because nobody else was. Tipper Gore, she's the uh, wife of Senator Gore, right? She's, wait, wait a second. She, she's the wife of Senator Gore, right? Right. Was this maybe started by her so she could uh, get a, a position uh, in her, president, uh, her husband's presidential campaign, which was upcoming? Well, the group was actually founded by four women. Um, three of them are Republicans. Tipper is a Democrat. The common thing that they all have is they're all mothers of young children. 
Um, Tipper's always been involved in issues like that. Back in 1977, she formed a group of parents <coughs> discussing violence on children's television, and this is something that she has chose as an issue, and it had nothing to do with her husband's campaign. Okay, so we know that if she ever gets into the White House, we're not going to have any heavy metal music uh, being played on the 4th of July, right? <laughs> not at all. I, I want to stress that our group has never lobbied or requested any type of legislation. It's a totally voluntary agreement. We're not the ones who make the decisions about which albums get labeled. It's a decision made between the artist and the record company. How about it, uh, Howard? You've heard uh, what we've been talking about here with Jennifer. Anything to add to that? Yeah, absolutely. And it's not necessarily about the PMRC. First of all, Jennifer, you always do a wonderful job of presenting the PMRC's position. And you also do a very good job of presenting your own values, and they are some good ones. But unfortunately, uh, there are some pro real problems out here. <laughs> I knew we were getting someplace, Howard. Go ahead. There are... thought maybe I was going to have a wedding up oh, here. Oh, back... <laughs> No chance. Uh, back in the early 80s, uh, there were people running around the country saying that uh, KISS stood for Knights in Service to Satan. But it that wasn't Kiss our group. Were, no, I'm not saying it is your group. Um, that uh, as a consequence, we should get rid of KISS. There was a fundamentalist minister down south who said that it's unfortunate that we have the uh, Bill of Rights. Uh, that if we had been living in the days of Christ, we wouldn't have a Bill of Rights and we would have been free to stone the members of KISS to death. Why? <laughs> Why should we be stoning them to death? Well, because it, their name the stands for Knights of Service to long. Satan, right. Um, ACDC, these very imaginative people said, uh, stood for Antichrist Devil's Children. But what does um, that have to do with the PMRC? It, we're not talking about the PMRC. You see, there's a cluster of groups. I thought that I was been, on to talk about the PMRC. We'll get to the PMRC. Well, yeah. Don't worry, we'll give you a chance. Hey, how about, yeah. how about, How about, how about that full-page ad you took out in Billboard? Well, we took out a full-page ad in Billboard that said that the PMRC is more trouble than you think. Yeah. Um, more dangerous than you think. Yeah, no, more trouble than you think was the actual phrasing. And uh, we were not too pleased with the PMRC. And we're not too pleased with the PMRC because the PMRC has basically been a Trojan horse for a bunch of kooks and maniacs, the kinds of people I'm talking about. I think it's the opposite. I think if record companies respond by putting consumer information on an album, then that takes away a platform from the fundamentalists who want to say that rock and roll is all inspired by Satan, which is obviously not true. But I think if, it's, if the industry responds in a responsible manner, which they are doing to a degree, then these people don't have a platform. You're no rock difficulty. Band. What poisoned you against rock and roll? I mean, you work Nothing for a rock magazine. Nothing poisoned me. I love rock and roll. I still listen to rock and roll exclusively. You look, I, listen to it for the music or for the lyrics? For both. For both. But I find that I am concerned with a growing trend in some music to degrade women, to show violence against women, to show brutality against women. And I'm concerned because the audience for this type of music is mostly adolescent males. And the type of ideas that they're getting about how to treat women and how to react in certain situations are going to have serious repercussions for us down the road when they're running the country. You think that's really what's causing some guys to... Uh have little regard for women, uh, rock and roll music, Not only, heavy but metal I think, music, yeah, lyrics. I think entertainment. I mean, haven't you seen some of these women walking powerful... around the streets today? Isn't that enough to give you? I think entertainment mm. media today is a powerful socializing tool, and I think adolescents and teenagers are more susceptible to messages in the media than any other age group because they're forming their own impressions, and they tend to pull away from parental influence and focus more on peer and media influences, and I think that there needs to be sensitivity on the part of artists who are marketing messages when those messages glorify rape and murder and suicide and violence. I think that that's something parents need to be informed about. I'll guarantee you most parents have no idea about the type of material and that is available, parents, and any, even less that their children may be listening to And they're to bad it. parents, aren't they? Exactly, and attention. we want to enlighten them. You want to enlighten them? You think you're going to enlighten them when their kid is 14 years old and they haven't taken any interest in the kid up to that point? Yeah. All of a sudden, yeah. they're going to take... I don't think... I don't think that we can throw our hands up in disgust and say, okay, the situation's there and we have nothing to do about it. I think the more people that begin to speak out, we're not telling parents that you need to take those albums and throw them in the trash can. We're saying you need to tune in, you need to get more involved with your children and what's influencing them. Can I interrupt them. for a second? No, actually let me interrupt both of you for a second. Let me, let me show you some objectionable albums. Uh, can you swing around and look at this monitor over here? Yeah. All right. All right. 
here's one by this is this is cat i assume let's see the next one let's see the next one now what is here let's take a look at another one take a look at another one see we got one more okay more megadeth megadeth Ross. I hope you had, I, I hope you didn't have anything to say about the last one or you're out of here. I don't know. <laughs> Look at when we come back, uh, we're gonna meet Twisted Sisters JJ French. Stand oh. when we salute three great American leaders, Lincoln, Washington, and Crazy Eddie. Crazy Eddie, his sale prices are insane. A beautiful oil painting in an exquisite frame. In a gallery, you could pay as much as $1,000 for paintings like these. But this Sunday only at a spectacular showing by Collector's Art. You could buy oils like you see here for a fraction of those high gallery prices. Plus over 4,000 paintings to be sold out from $14 to $39. This Sunday only, 9 a.m. to 6 p.m. In Secaucus at the Meadowlands Hilton. In Terrytown at the Westchester Marriott. In Hempstead at the Grand Royal Hotel. In Staten Island at the Holiday Inn. In Smithtown, Long Island at the Sheridan. In Piscataway at the Sheridan Regal Inn. In Livingston at the Holiday Inn. And in Stanford, Connecticut at the Marriott. Presenting the Sweet 16 Breakfast Special from the International House of Pancakes. For pancake lovers only, this limited offer includes your choice of any two of these 16 all-time international hits. Remember Banana Nut? How about Strawberry? And who could forget Old Fashioned Buttermilk? And if you act right now, we'll include two eggs and two bacon and sausage, all for one low International House of Pancakes price. But hurry, these platters are sure to be eaten up quickly. Two eggs, two bacon or sausage, and two same-style pancakes. Sweet 16 for only 216. This offer not available by mail. If you need help, if you have nowhere to turn, and if you can find them, maybe you can hire the A-Team! Spread the word. There's only one A-Team. And they're back. How do you do it? George Papard. I'm the planner. Dirk Benedict. We're just here to make a little point. Dwight Schultz. And Mr. T. Nice quiet life, huh, Face? The A-Team. Saturday at 5, right here on Channel 9. Weekday evenings, the place to be is Channel 9. It's a great place you'll have it. It's got everything. And now we've got heroes and hunks, T.J. Hooker and Magnum. I can't wait to check it out. TV's top cop and premier private eye will fill your weekday evenings with excitement. T.J. Hooker at 5 and Magnum at 6 on Channel 9. This is it. The holiday sale you've all been waiting for. See Siemens first. Celebrate Siemens' most exciting Washington's birthday sale ever. Get incredible savings in every Siemens department on the beautiful furniture you need. Living room packages, dining sets, bedrooms, bedding and accessories, all dramatically reduced now through Washington's birthday at all Siemens locations in New York, New Jersey, Pennsylvania, and Connecticut. For the price that's always right, see Siemens first. Uh, Jennifer, Jennifer Norwood remains on home base with us. We're joined by J.J. French, all right? He's the founder of the band Twisted Sister. Now, before, before we talk to J.J., let's look at something that has never been shown before on broadcast television from Twisted Sister. You can see it on the monitors at home and here in the studio. Go ahead. J.J. J.J., you've heard what Jennifer has to say. Cool it a second. Cool it. You've heard what Jennifer has to say about, uh, about heavy metal. Is it, uh, is it sadistic? Is that Satanism? What is it? What she says is pure crap. Is basically it. Now, three things. First of all, uh, let me just take one second to thank all of our fans for all these years for supporting Twisted Sister in the tri-state area. Thank you very much. Second of all, Second of all, you're going to be hearing people screaming about Giant Lives Dangerously, which is a rock and roll local cable TV show. Cool it. We want to hear the uh, show. We brought you this shirt from Giant Lives Dangerously. More of this is for you. All right? Okay. All right. And now, 
And now let's talk about now let's talk about heavy metal. I've been playing heavy metal for 15 years. I got into it because I love the music. I love the good time. And that was all there was to it. And to insult the intelligence of these people by telling them that they don't have the intelligence to pick the kind of music they want to listen to is an insult to Did the I people of the United that? States of America. Okay? Let me ask a question. And all the time you've been in, you've been... You've been in it for 15 years now, and all the time did you see a lot of drugs, a lot of alcohol taking place with the gang? Let me tell you this. I have toured and done over 3,300 shows in the past 15 years. I have played in 34 countries. I've been on tour with Whitesnake, Rat. Uh, you, I mean, listen, from Motley, Metallica, you can name the band, and we've been on tour around the world over and over and over again. 300 days a year, and I have never ever in my life seen anything but professional attitudes from these bands, Mort. I haven't seen drug use, they just busted their butt. And the accusations that can be placed here, the accusations that are placed here are so unfounded as to create hysteria which leads to an unfortunate platform. What that platform leads to is crazy legislation that cities around this country have adopted in order to try to keep rock out. And if it can happen in one city, it can happen in another, it can happen right here in New Jersey. And I'm telling you, you can't let that happen. Don't blame rock and roll, okay? Wait a second. I don't think I, I don't think I really heard you. I don't think I really heard you blame rock and roll. I don't think that's what I said, and I've had words put in my mouth by more people than this person. Um, what I'm saying is that parents need to be tuned in. I'm not saying that people don't have the in? intelligence to choose what they want for themselves. I think they need to be informed to make that decision. When you go into an album store... In other words, what you are saying is there are some... Re what you were saying is there are some very responsible heavy metal groups there are, and there, there are, are some indeed. irresponsible heavy exactly. metal groups. Exactly. Let me give you a for instance. And same as there were responsible people who wrote songs with the word <laughs> in it and others before rock and roll ever came along. That'll be edited out, right? Well, you know, I don't want to be the arbiter of good taste. I don't want to be the person to decide what is right for everyone because that's too much of a generalization. What may be right for me may not be appropriate for the 10-year-old kid down the block. But I'm Jennifer, just saying that is, parents need to be tuned Jennifer, in, then the problem and the is, way they get tuned in. Who is the person in? who makes, my, my concern is, who's the person that then makes that decision? The who parent. Is the, no, who is the arbiter? Well, if it is the parent, let me say this to you, okay? Considering that rock and roll has been a scapegoat for the past 30 years and continues to be a scapegoat for every cheap accusation that falls their way, a couple of things occurred to me. Do you know that about 10 years ago, there was a guy called Son of Sam, went around, killed people, and when they arrested him, he told everyone that a dog told him to do it. And I thought this was interesting. He was had. part of a satanic yeah, group. True, though. but just remember, a dog told him to do it. Now, if you want to take this, take this theory way out to, it, to its end, then you should abolish all the dogs on this planet. Then you have this sick guy in Chicago. Then you have this sick guy in Chicago. You have, then, you had, you had, then you had William Gacy in Chicago, that sick son of a bitch who molested and killed 30 boys. And when they talked to him, he said he listened to classical music. Now, do you then say you blame classical music? The whole point here is that rock and roll is consistently a scapegoat, and to try to figure out a way to channel some sort of censorship is dangerous because who begins but who begins to decide who makes that decision jennifer is it you who is it jennifer i'll tell you did something you my parents were good people they brought Mind me you. up to know right and wrong like your parents did okay all right i am not all right i'm not a thug i'm a good person man these people are decent people and the, my parents brought me up with a hell of a lot of respect and if i remind, if i grew up to be half the man my father is i will consider myself a I grew up. i grew up I grew up with heavy metal music. I attended my first Alice Cooper concert at the age of nine. So I'm not going to stand up here and tell everyone that going to see Alice Cooper or Twisted Sister on stage is going to make you into an antisocial being. I'm saying that people need to be tuned in. And I don't really buy into the fact that, you know, what this man says, that there's no drug and alcohol abuse going I on at concerts. I didn't say there wasn't. I just that said there's I no see violence, it. that there's no sadism. There are things... Oh, I never said there wasn't. I'll give you an example of where some were you, parental where were you in the day? Where were you in the days of Elton John, Lucy in the Sky with Diamonds? Uh, were you folks out there fighting that stuff? Where no, were you in the days of Shirley Ellis, all right? Do the nitty gritty. 
which was an expression, which was a, which was a ghetto expression describing a. I'm not a saying that we need anatomy. to throw this stuff out. I'm simply saying that we need to let people know it's there. We need to bring it out into the open. We're finding that most of the people who are listening to the music that is the most violent and the most sadistic and the most sexual are young kids, and parents have no idea. I'm not talking about a 16-year-old. I'm talking about kids who are 12 and 13 year old. Dee Snyder, as a matter of fact, has noted in interviews in um, heavy metal fan magazines that his audience is getting younger and younger and younger. And you would substantiate that, wouldn't Morton, you? You know what's interesting? Because of the kind of fear and paranoia that's thrown around by the PMRC, it leads to some kind of legislation I'd like to give you a little background on. There's a city called San Antonio. It's uh, in uh, Texas. And, and uh, what happened was they passed an anti-rock ordinance, which could very well be the, the architect of something that, that could happen here one day, so it's uh, interesting that you listen to this. This law that was passed was designed to theoretically keep bands out of the marketplace, and what the law stated was, and this is what they thought they were going to do, the law, to paraphrase the law, was that if you perform sex with animals, perform sex with dead people, or perform sex with minors on stage, you wouldn't be allowed in this town. Now, I think that's pretty okay? damn reasonable. Now, I think that's now, reasonable. That's totally now, now, now. That this is, is this totally was, incorrect. No, what that was, is not what it said. This. Let me just finish this, okay? But that what happened was, when they passed it. the anti-rock uh, ordinance, Twisted Sister was the first... It's not an anti-rock oh, ordinance, it, that's it, an anti-sick ordinance. It, definitely. <laughs> and Morton, exactly, exactly. And, Think about the mentality that had to be drummed in these people for them to consider that this is what was going to keep out rock and roll. So what happened was the promoter was told, uh, the promoter told them Twisted Sister was coming in. Well, they said, well, obviously Twisted Sister must fit into this parameter. So like this law will keep them out. And he said, I got news for you. Twisted Sister doesn't fit in this parameter. They said, well, if you bring them in and they do these things, we're going to find you. Well, what happened was we performed in front of 17,000 people and 12 members of a PTA group and 12 members of a Christian organization came down to monitor our show. And this is the results oh, of that awesome. performance, okay? The results were, first of all, we came on stage, we played three songs, and then we made a speech to the kids. We told them that they have to watch out who makes laws controlling what they want to listen to. At the end of the show, the chief of police walked in to the dressing room and thanked us for saying what we said and keeping things straight because he has been at the chief of police and had 17 years full of rock and roll concerts. He's never seen the crap that they um, try to jump, throw down people's throats, and right. the PTA well, got let me together. Hear Jennifer rebut this one thing. The yeah. actual ordinance um, states that not that they'll keep these bands out of town, but if they come to town and if they say that their show does contain those elements, then they are required to print on the ticket that children 14 and under are not allowed to attend. No, I'm sorry, you're wrong. That is the, the ordinance. I'm sorry, I the can, promoter, I have it the on promoter paper. told me himself that he was told that if the act comes into town, he books it. He has to be, he will paper. pay a fine. All right, let, okay. me, let, me, go to, uh, let me go to our loudmouth here. We've got Cat, all right? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Listen, let, let, let us talk here for a second. Shut up. I've right. turned on MTV. I've turned on... Listen. I've turned on MTV a number of times, and I really only see two kinds of women on MTV. Young blods, blondes, and virginal boots, all right? Let's see your boots, boy. Huh? I'm, not, I'm not a young blonde, baby. And I'm, and I'm not a virgin, but neither are you, either one. Yeah, but you know what you are. Usually, and Junior, usually they Roy have. Junior, I hate to tell you, you're chain smoking in my face, and you're gonna get cancer. And please, don't get cancer. I'll tell you something, Mort. You, you know, Mort. You know, Mort. This shows your total. Ins shut up. Shut up. This total, total shows your total insecurity of females and everything, because you have to be sucking on a cigarette. I it's amazing to me. I, I, you still uh, have your own to suck on? Come back here. Hey, hey, come back here. Hey, I had to say something. Come back here and suck my <laughs> And I'll guarantee you she has That's one. that I can understand this lady is fighting against. Get her ass out of here. We'll be back in a minute. February 
Lee when we salute three great American leaders, Lincoln, Washington, and Crazy Eddie. Crazy Eddie, his sale prices are insane. I could see the flames screaming, people screaming, people shouting. They're going to work hard, graduate, and become viable and productive citizens, or they're going to get the hell out of that school. The story of this tragedy at Howard Beach is finally written. I was homeless, not insane. I'm a human being. I have rights, and they were all violated. Don't let anyone tell you what they said. Hear them say it. News 88, WCBS Radio, News 88. You try to relax, but you can feel its presence. It's there waiting for you. Yes, you've created an unreal entity of awesome power. All because you're putting off doing your taxes till the last minute. The tax laws have changed and tax forms are different. Don't let it haunt you. File now, file accurately, and make your taxes less taxing. Now playing in a theater near you. Check newspapers for showtimes. Good morning, Vietnam! I couldn't stop laughing. Easy, girl. Time magazine proclaims best military comedy since MASH. The New York Times says one man's tour de force. I want to see it again and again. Thank you. The Today Show calls it touching and wildly funny, and Siskel and Ebert give it two enthusiastic thumbs up. One of the best pictures of the year. Yeah! Good morning, Vietnam. Rated R. What's the number one selling, great tasting, non-alcoholic brew in America? Kingsbury. Look what Levitt's got you for my birthday. A showroom full of outstanding bargains, drastically reduced for Washington's birthday sale. Look, would I lie to you? Meineke knows just how you feel. You want a quality muffler that doesn't cost a lot. Hey, you big ape! I'm not gonna pay a lot for this muffler! Relax. Meineke's quality Everlast mufflers are priced from just $18.93 to $26.95 installed. Oh, I'm not gonna pay a lot and still get quality. Bob Nelson again for Grand Prix Jeep Eagle of Hicksville. Four good reasons to buy from Grand Prix Jeep Eagle. Price and service. Uh, I could have been somebody. I could have been a container. You know, I, I own one of these, really. Uh, Grand Prix Beep Jeep. Grand Prix Jeep Eagle of Hicksville. It's, it's Grand Prix. Oh. Now that we've fumigated the studio, and we're, and we're back again, I wonder if you'd do me a favor. Play some of that extremely talented young lady's music for me, will you please? Uh, that's it. God, that's heaven. That's heaven, huh? Satan. La -la. Jennifer, tell me about PMRC's campaign to print lyrics on the outside of record albums, all right? I mean, uh, yeah, how could you decipher that lyric in the first place? Well, um, the artist writes the lyrics, and it would be the artist in the record company that would have them printed on the outside. That is one of two options. They can either use the generic warning label or print the lyrics. Howard, respond. 
PMRC, unfortunately, Jennifer, the PMRC is being very phony about what it's really all about. Your primary campaign is not a campaign to label records. Your primary campaign is a campaign of the kind of misinformation and disinformation that led the people in San Antonio to believe that any group that goes up on stage playing a rock and roll is sleeping with children on stage or is talking about sleeping with dead people or animals. The fact is, Jennifer, wait a minute, the fact is, the fact is, I'm going to tell you, you had a symposium in the fall that mm -hmm. gave a very clear indication of what the PMRC was really all about. You had the, the um, Surgeon General of the United States there, which gave it a great weight, weight of authority. You also had the um, endorsement of the American Academy of Pediatricians. Mm -hmm. You had the they endorsement of the National Association for, for Mental Health. Health. What did you have in that symposium? Who did you trot out? You trotted out some phony scientists from the Pacific Northwest who claim to have spurious research that shows that rock and roll rhythms cause suicide. You had somebody, you had somebody who said that rock and roll is responsible for cattle mutilations. Were you there, Howard? You had a, no, this Were is according there, to the story in the Village Voice. Now, okay, Jennifer, well, do you, you think the Village Voice... The According, according to the Village Voice... Well, I would be happy, Howard, said. to send you a tape of the event. I would love to what see we it. Had, we had the support of the American Academy of Pediatricians. These are mental health people that are concerned about the levels of violence directed at children in the media. There have been over a thousand studies done about entertainment violence in this nation. Seventy-five percent of them indicate that there are harmful or negative effects on children. This is what we discussed at this But Jennifer, there, isn't, there is so little violence in rock and roll that it's astonishing. There isn't violence in rock most and rock and roll. You're putting together a, a seminar that said that there's that lots of violence, violence in rock and roll is baloney. Yeah. Yeah. It's horse pucking. We well, let me go to, uh, let's, let's uh, get Debbie Linder in here to uh, join us, all right? She's president of the New Jersey Federation for Drug-Free Communities. You've heard the conversation tonight, Debbie. Anything to add? And when you talk about drug-free communities, how does this enter into a drug-free community? Well, uh, I work with families whose children are in a lot of trouble with drugs and alcohol, suicide, and so forth. Um, I've worked very closely with these parents. I have been privy to diaries that young people who are into the drug scene have written. And I want you to know that all throughout the diary are references to heavy metal, songs, and so forth. And uh, my question here is, uh, I have no, no problem with heavy metal or rock and roll that gives out a positive healthy message. Why do we have to give right lyrics? Healthy in whose eyes? I, I, I would hope in everybody's eyes. I don't think it's healthy to uh, promote and glamorize the use of drugs and alcohol, especially when you know your audience is the adolescent audience. Okay. These are, are, are young people who are trying to find their identity. Uh, they gravitate to music, which is natural and fine. And, but what is the message that they're getting from some, not all, I am not condemning heavy metal or rock and roll as a whole. I am condemning those lyrics which promote drug and alcohol use that make it very glamorous. These kids right. really get Let's excited listen about for a this second. stuff. Let's listen for a second. Tell me if this fits into the category. Ozzy Osbourne, I think it's called Suicide Solution. No. Just so. Do I think it? Is that a negative message to you? And this is, you, you talk about parents not being able to intervene. Do you know, I cannot understand the lyrics to that song. <laughs> how, how can we as parents intervene if we can't really understand well, the music? Well, how do the, the kids, right how here, the kids just, understand Can I give that? you a little bit of information about this song? Yeah. The key, key line is... Um, about drowning your sorrows, because this is an anti-alcohol song. Yeah. Ozzy Osbourne, Ozzy Osbourne is a man. Ozzy Osbourne is a man who's had a serious drug and alcohol problem, and he is trying to say that alcohol is no solution. It's a suicide solution. Now, let me tell you something else. The PMRC and some of the people who are allied with the PMRC have been very active in saying that rock music causes suicide. Well, all social psychology I've studies, all, but Tipper Gore has, in she's fact, she's quoted in the Washington Post. No, she's quoted in the Washington Post this last weekend as saying exactly that. She didn't say it could have been a factor. She said that it's been associated with numerous suicides. She's been very explicit. 
And the same statement was made in Susan Baker's testimony at the hearing that you guys put together in Washington there two years ago. There have been connections. Now, wait, let me finish. The, the point have been is made by the that media, not by the PMRC. The point is that suicide increases every time there's a headline about suicide. The groups that are opposed to rock and roll have said suicide solution is about suicide and have gotten that in headlines all over the country. Kids who don't understand those lyrics any better than you do don't get Ozzy Osbourne's message thanks to people like the PMRC. They don't get the anti-drug message. The place, they don't the get the anti-alcohol message. What they get is the suicide. The so that everybody will get the right message. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 That's, the, that's the whole purpose. Why do a group of Washington wives have the record companies shaking in their high heel boots? Stand by, we'll find out. Yeah. It's three ring value time at your New York, New Jersey Buick dealers, so I dress for the occasion. In ring one, save up to $1,200 on Buicks with value option packages. In ring two, get up to $1,000 cash back from Buick. In ring three, test drive the new Buick and get two passes to Ringling Brothers and Barnum and Bailey Circus, opening at Meadowlands Arena March 8th, Nassau Coliseum March 15th, and Madison Square Garden March 23rd. But hurry before the circus passes and Buicks disappear. Not me, the Buicks. Fellow Americans, we are all celebrating Crazy Eddie's President's Birthday Week sales extravaganza. Get up to 60% in savings on anything and everything in home entertainment. Get an Emerson forehead VCR with HQ and wireless remote, $1.99 after rebate. Get an ultrasonic humidifier, $38. Get a sharp 19-inch Linetron color TV, $1.88. Save up to 60% without even crossing the Delaware. Crazy Eddie's President's Birthday Week sale prices are patriotically insane. Visions of tomorrow, today, at Futurama Interiors. See, touch, feel. The latest designs in furniture now at Futurama. Choose from hundreds of selections of quality furniture, like this beautiful imported black lacquer bedroom set, or this luxurious, genuine Italian leather living room, and this magnificent handcrafted dining room set. For luxury and affordability, come to one of Futurama's giant showrooms in Flushing, Astoria, and Ridgewood, and get the furniture for your future today. Futurama Interiors by Par. ID. It's I ID. You ID. Why ID? It's my ID. It's dance. ID is the latest steps. I got a step for you that you won't forget ever. Woo! It's in the room tonight. Come on, y'all. ID ready. is tomorrow's stars. I'll let you into my secret. ID is today's kids. Well, to me, popular means something that's not fake, something that you, you bring up inside of you, something that's natural. If you're fake, you're not cool. You also have to have a lot of energy and look like you want to be friends with people. Dr. Joy Brown gets the teens talking. Trisha Ronane keeps the record spinning. And Hinton Battle makes the dance floor come alive. I thought for the day. <laughs> if anybody asks you to dance, just say yes. ID, Saturday at noon on Channel 9. From Touchstone Pictures, it's official. Everyone's raving about it. Good morning, Vietnam! I couldn't stop laughing. Easy Girl. Time Magazine proclaims best military comedy since MASH. The New York Times says one man's tour de force. I want to see it again and again. Thank you. The Today Show calls it touching and wildly funny, and Siskel and Ebert give it two enthusiastic thumbs up. One of the best pictures of the year. Yeah. Good morning, Vietnam. Rated R. Now playing at a theater near you. Check newspapers for showtimes. Let's come back. Let's come back to Howard Bloom for a minute. Howard, the record industry and PMRC both agree. Record sales have not been affected by the warning labels in any way, shape, or form. Why then are you so afraid of these little stickers? Well, it's not just the stickers. First of all, let's get to the stickers. Let's pretend that the stickers are all the PMRC is all about, which is false. But we'll pretend that for a second. Uh, you put a sticker on an album that says that it has objectionable material. Most of the records sold in the United States, 80%, are sold in mall locations. You know, those nice mall stores you go shopping on on the weekends? Well, the fact is, the mall owners have contracts, leases, with the mall owners. The store owners have contracts that say that if they display or sell objectionable material, they are bounced. That's the end of their lease. The end of their lease is the end of their business. How many records so do you think they're going to accept? they rather sell as long as no one knows about it. 
So are they selling it? Is it a subterfuge, the way they're selling it then? No, because frankly, the Ozzy Osbourne song we were just talking about, the lyrics are in the album. Somebody really wants to know what's in it, it's in it. Now, frankly, I'm in favor of seeing lyrics on albums. You mean to tell me jackets. that the American public would rather buy their products blindly? They'd rather buy items so long as they didn't know what was in it before they got Your it? Your agreement with the record industry, your current agreement, which is not what I object to about the PMRC, says that either the record companies will put the lyrics on the jacket or they will put a label on the jacket. But again, the real problem here is the PMRC's primary activity has nothing to do with this labeling agreement. For Our example... primary activity is working with parents, teaching them how to communicate better with their children. Not true. Telling them, I've got right here a book. Your booklet is wonderful, is, but that's not your major activity. This is information that we send out to parents. We ask parents not to throw it away. I think parents are better off if they sit down with their children, discuss this material, and give them insight into it, rather than saying, this is no good, because that's going to make kids want it even Your more. Your booklet is wonderful. The point you just made is wonderful. The fact is, there are a couple of other things in there. First of all, there is a statement about rock and roll. It says that rock and roll is almost always involved with sexual perversion, sexual promiscuity, substance abuse. It's right there on page, roughly page three. The second problem is that Tipper, in her book, now I've got it, I've got my copy too. Go ahead, keep going. Let's, let's take a look. Let's, 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 let's hope. Let's hope. Okay, five major themes. Five major themes that rock music returns to again and again. Rebellion, substance abuse, sexual promiscuity and perversion, violence, and the occult. It does say it in there. We're not saying that this is all rock music. I will say right now that the majority of rock music is good, positive then messages. Then why doesn't it say there that the majority yeah. of rock music is it, good? It does say that in the introduction, but the introduction looks like something that was pasted on after the real essence of the message was written in there. Now, the second problem Negative is, Negative messages Jennifer, in music do not represent a majority of today's popular yes, music. Yes, I, I thought that the introduction was on there. J.J., let J.J. Let J.J. Let J.J. Let jump in here a second. up what happened in San Antonio, because it had a direct bearing. Because it had... It had a direct bearing. It had a direct bearing. It has direct bearing upon the overreactionary um, uh, goals of the PMRC, and that was this. Following our show there, these two organizations met at the local Denny's by the Alamo. And to think that the First Amendment was being uh, mulled over at the local Denny's of the Alamo is a kind of scary thought. But what happened was that day, the uh, the head of the PTA called up the promoter and said, "You know what? We really over we we got overblown. What we saw that last night was a great show." People had an amazing time. Yeah, okay, we didn't like certain things. We didn't like cursing, this, that, and the other thing. But we were led down the garden path. It was the wrong thing. We were hyped in a negative way by organizations such as this. And this is what is so sad about it, because these people don't come to the shows, and they don't see the truth. And I'm telling you, I'll say it again. I'll say it over and over and over again. You want to make rock and roll a scapegoat for parents, unfortunately, who have problems with their kids? I'll tell you something. Don't blame rock and roll music. You don't. Let me go to uh, Anne Marie Holska. Let me go to Anne Marie Holska, right? Anne Marie is with the Parents Music Resource. Zip it! Come on, She's with the Parents time. Music Resource Center. You're an advocate of that group. You've been a PTA member for 15 years. You've got three children of your own. Four children of your own. Two are here God, tonight. God, you've been happy since Beautiful I last saw you. Four girls! All right, but let, let me ask you something. You music your children buy? Have you always paid attention to the music your children bought? And were you involved in your children's lives so you knew what they were doing? I'm involved in my children's lives since the day they were born. Okay. okay. Number one. Number two. I sought uh, the Parents Music Resource Center. I called them. They did not call me. Okay. They have not influenced me. Through them, the material I have received, I can now talk to my children about the music. The other day, we were really talking. They didn't realize we what were... What kind of music okay. were they listening to music? before you started talking, before um, you got involved with PMRC? Well, Motley Crue, okay? But, hey, hey, All right. I enjoyed one of their songs we were listening to the other day. <laughs> All right. What are you laughing? Come on. Give me a chance That's now. That's okay. I love it. Love okay? It. I'm on my way home. Beautiful song. Beautiful. 
Okay, home sweet home. I'm clear. No, it's okay, because okay, I listen. I like, I like no, I'm talking Metallica. now, I'm please. Sinatra, so I can understand. Now, let me get back to PMRC, how they have helped parents like myself on Staten Island, and Mr. Bloom has a hang-up of PMRC, and he's not looking at the parents' point of view. And that's what's getting me. They say censorship. We're not looking for censorship. Totally no. It's awareness. Let us parents be aware what is out there. I wish Why I knew that. Why aren't you aware and listening to the music your kids listen to on radio? I do listen to. I didn't know the. Then you're aware. You don't need an album no, no. with the lyric on it, do they you? They gave me songs that I probably my kids weren't even listening to. They have the albums. They the ones that are the filth. I call filth. I can't. And there is filth out the there. Air. That's all right. You we know, know that. that. Uh -uh. That you never would have found, and your kids never would have found without no, their help. No, they probably found. Maybe they don't want to hear it. All right, tell you what we're going to do when we come back: more metalheads and some hardcore PTA moms. Stand back. From Touchstone Pictures, a ruthless killer. Jump! A beautiful hostage. You have to get me out of these mountains. Two men tracking them. Sarah! One for love, one for revenge. This man is mine, you understand? Sidney Poitier, Tom Berenger. Two men doing whatever it takes. You shoot her, you dead half a second later. To get their man. Get out! Shoot to kill, rated R. Now playing at a theater near you. Check newspapers for showtimes. The exciting adventure continues. Trainer Horn's multi-million dollar president birthday sale. And what a celebration. You'll save and save and save some more on famous name color TVs, VCRs, stereos, and home appliances. Every price on every item guaranteed lowest or your money back. Get a 19-inch Zenith color TV, just $197. An Emerson remote cable ready VCR, $199. A Whirlpool 18 cubic foot refrigerator, $386. Remember that Trader's going to save you during his president birthday sale. Now at all New York, New Jersey superstores. All the ballots have been counted, and Crazy Eddie's voted you the winner of savings up to 60% during Crazy Eddie's President's Birthday Week sales extravaganza. Save up to 60% at all the best brands of TVs, VCRs, stereo systems, microwave ovens, portables, anything and everything in home entertainment's on sale now during Crazy Eddie's President's Week sales extravaganza. Save up to 60% without even crossing the Delaware. Crazy Eddie's President's Birthday Week sale prices are patriotically insane. I have the worst cold I ever had in my whole life. I sneeze so much, I think my nose is broke. I cough so loud and I woke up rotten. For all these symptoms, there's Pediacare. Unlike medicines adults can take, Pediacare is made especially for a child's cold. Or a child's cold with a cough. <laughs> and it's measured precisely for your child's age and weight. My cold went bye-bye. I finally stopped sneezing. A child's cold needs special care. Pediacare. When I had that scare with the pain in my chest, I went to see a cardiologist. And when I had that pinched nerve, I saw a physical therapist every week. But an eye doctor? No. No, I never went to see an eye doctor. Glaucoma is one of those things that just sneaks up on you. I never knew there was anything wrong. Have your eyes examined regularly, because no one can save your sight but you. All right, I want to I wanna go to our loudmouths in the studio audience. I want to talk, uh, let me talk first to a, a gentleman that uh, a lot of you probably know. Uh, let me introduce him to you, Randy Michelson, lead singer for Damien. Randy, you've listened to the conversation. What is, what is heavy metal music meant to you, pal? Uh, I think literally it saved my life. How? Because. No, Shut up, let's listen to him. <coughs> it Go ahead. gave me the ability to dream, and if I hadn't found music, and heavy metal happens to be the music I like, I would probably uh, be just what the PMRC connotates that we, you know, in the drugs. drugs? And, no. Yeah. No, wait. You want to hear something? Damien is playing a Say No to Drugs concert right in our home city, Toledo, Ohio. Don't tell me. I'm drug free. How about how about your music? Do you get it? Do you get into the glorification of bestiality or having sex with three-year-old kids or any of that kind of garbage? Absolutely not. 
No. Do you sing full time? Do you work full time? Do you play full time? What do you do? Uh, work part time and sing part time. So you hold another job, all right? Let's hear some of I his music, it. all right? Wait. Let's hear some of his music for a second. Go ahead. I got, I, no, I got news for you. That's just good old rock and roll music. What's wrong with that? There is absolutely nothing wrong with that. Good. All right. I'm Anne Marie Holska's daughter, P PTA member 15 years, whatever you want to call it. My mother has been there for me, but I, she hasn't held me by the hand going to the music store and saying, Denise, this is what you can buy, and Denise, this is what you can buy. She hasn't done that. I saw Twisted Sister. Okay, at Radio City Music Hall about two, two, three years ago. But I was 17. Did you go out and buy their stuff? No, I never bought an album. My sister actually did, though. Okay. Okay. <laughs> but, but wait, but wait. Did your, mama but wait. did your mama take it away from her? No, actually, I did one day because she was 10. Okay? And their concert that I saw, I thought it was, I thought, hey, you know, it was rock and roll. A friend of mine liked it, and I went with her. Okay? But... I saw young, young kids in that audience, and they were doing, and the language that they were using, and the songs that some of them were, so, yeah, sometimes yeah, they were singing. Yeah, but you see, the thing, you say you saw young, young kids, where the hell were the old, old parents who were supposed yeah. to be taking care of the old parents? Where were they? Why didn't they make sure that those kids didn't go to that concert? His parents were My kid was going to a no concert like that that on. had anything to do with Satanism, anything to do with perverted sex, anything to do with drugs. I'm a tough enough parent. My kid get a kick in the ass and not go. Yeah. what their kid is doing and they turn around and they see all this stuff and all this stuff is put right in their face and their parents are home who knows what they don't care maybe they're not aware maybe they're working more, parents more, maybe more, they just don't more, can I just say something here? I got, yeah, what, quick, I got one quickly, thing now, to say take a break here, really do you want to know what's wrong with the stickers on the album I'll tell you the next step leads to censorship yeah. and heavy metal wait a minute wait a minute and heavy metal is every kid's right to rock and if you censor it Let's take a break. We'll come right back. We'll come right back. I said take a break. Tired of sitting home and watching the same old boring television shows? Television is alive and well at Channel 9. So be part of our studio audience if you dare. For tickets right to tickets, for Morton Downey Jr. Show, 9 Broadcast Plaza, Secaucus, New Jersey, 07094. Please include your area code and phone number. And we'll send you tickets for the next available show. Sorry, only six tickets per request. Who's got it than us? Fortune Off! It's Fortune Off's furniture and rug sale. Save up to 50% off on our collection of dining sets, wardrobes, wall units, and entertainment centers. Save up to 50% off on all our wool Chinese rugs. 9 by 12 starting at eleven ninety nine. dollars And if you buy furniture or rugs now through February 27th, you won't be billed until July 1988 at Fortune Off, Westbury and Wayne. Fortune Off, who's got it better than us? Mr. Clam, you have the floor. Now look here, you guys. I call this meeting with calamari, scongealy, mussels, and miss shrimp because I know that all of you are worried since Lenny's Clam Bar and Restaurant is doing such a big job with delicious pasta dishes and tempting Italian specialties. Now you monks can stop worrying, see? Last report showed that we seafood specialties are still going strong. The customers love us all, and so will you. Have a complimentary glass of wine on the house at the Lenny's Clam Bar and Restaurant nearest you, see? 
to celebrate my birthday this year, four great Autoland locations join together looking to cut their inventory in half. 50% off the manufacturer's suggested retail price on every option and on every new car, truck, and conversion van. Not just a few. Every Dodge, Ford, Chevrolet, Toyota, Chrysler, Plymouth, Lincoln, Mercury, Mazda, Subaru, Mercedes, Saab, Hugo, and Shelby. 5,000 vehicles in all. 50% off the MSRP on every option. Ross, get $400 to $2,500 factory cash back on select models. February movie, Meltdown, the February freeze. After 25 years of experimenting, marriage is back. The marriage of the 80s combines the best of the old with the new. It unites equals, since work is no longer mandated by tradition, but divided according to talent, inclination, and need. Marriage again is unconditional and generous. Each partner is special, unique. Marriage is again permanent and romantic. And that's something to celebrate. Let's go. Let's go quickly to our audience. Quick comment. All right. Um, I think the members of Damien are a little are a little too optimistic. The record stickers have already led to censorship. There are music distributors, Peaches. Re uh, Sound Warehouse in Dallas. There's a few other music distributors that refuse to carry any records that are labeled at all. In effect, these labels, uh, these records never get to the major stores. They are censored just by the labels being put on them. JJ. Okay. Just uh, please just remember, um, there's a cable show called Giant Lives Dangerously. We talk about subjects like this. It, it happens to be a hot new cable show in the New York area. Please watch it. And if the PMRC spends half of its time trying to eradicate the drug problem in this country rather than stop the only we'll reason be better off. Jennifer, Jennifer. I think. Let Jennifer have her closing statement. If artists don't feel comfortable with warning labels, let them use printed lyrics. I think parents need to be aware. They need to know that their child is going to witness 18,000 murders on television before they reach high school. They need information. They need accurate information so that they can make the decisions in the home. I thought, uh, quickly, you got 10 seconds. The only, the only reason Jesse. Howard's doing this is because he just wants to have money in his pocket. That's the only reason. He's trying to get these guys to play there. We've had, we've had some good arguments from both sides. I think the most important thing is that the parents, all right, that the parents get involved. Forget, let, me, let me read this to you, all right? Surgeon's warning. Smoking causes lung cancer, heart disease, emphysema, and may compl complicate pregnancy. Yeah! Labels, they suck. 